back to another episode of Sit and Spin with me, your host, Joe Royland. Today on the show, it's the return of a band and their first album in quite, quite, quite some time. A uh, record I've been long hoping may happen someday and finally has. And that would be Bash and Pop and their new album, Anything Could Happen. Now, Bash and Pop, I'm going to give you a little bit of history on them. Bash and Pop is the brainchild of Tommy Stinson, who first came to fame as the bassist for the Minneapolis rock band The Replacements. Uh, he uh, started the group with his late brother guitarist Bob Stinson, drummer Chris Mars, and singer-songwriter guitarist Paul Westerberg way back in 1979 when he was all at the tender age of 13 years old. Uh, of course, if you don't know about The Replacements, go out and find out about them. We're not going to go through their whole history right now because it would take way too long. But when they called it quits in the early 90s, Tommy's first project after leaving the band uh, was the group Bash and Pop and their 1993 release, Friday Night is Killing Me, which was one of my favorite albums to come out that year. And while technically it was a band, it was kind of more like a band in name and touring purposes only, uh, the group consisted of Tommy switching from bass to rhythm guitar and also being the front man of the group doing all the singing most of the songwriting. Uh, had Steve Foley on drums who had come with Tommy from the last days of the replacements. He played in them during their final days. Uh, Steve Foley's brother Kevin on bass and Steve Bransing on guitar. And all those guys played on the album but there was also a lot of outside guest help musicians from people like Ben Montench and Mike Campbell from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Jeff Trott from Wire Train and Greg Lees from American Music Club and a host of other people. And overall, for most intents and purposes, it was still kind of a band. And the album was not so far removed from the raucous rock and roll of The Replacements, granted with a bit more of a country-style twang to the guitars. And even though tracks from the album like uh, Never Aim to Please and Loose Ends got a bit of airplay, and critically the album was well received, commercially it didn't do so well, the group did do some touring behind it, but Pretty much in 1994, the band broke up and it saw Stinson moving on to his next project, which was the group Perfect, in 1995. And even though that band lasted a few more years than Bash and Pop did, in their time together, they only managed to release one EP and they recorded an album in 1997, but that record didn't end up seeing the light of day until 2004. There were some issues with the uh, company that was going to be putting it out, um, legal problems and stuff, and that's why it kind of got lost in the shuffle and not released to a later period of time. Now, after all this, Tommy just decided, okay, I'm just going to go solo and concentrated working on solo stuff, but the appeal of being in a band uh, also drew him to be in joining Guns N' Roses in 1998 as their bassist, and he played with them from 1998 to 2012, also releasing solo material during this time. In 2004, he put out his first solo album under just his own name, Gorilla Village, Head, Village Gorilla Head, uh, which was a decent record. And on top of that, he also lended his bass playing skills to fellow Minneapolis band Soul Asylum. Uh, from 2005 to 2012, he replaced the late Carl Mueller upon his passing, and he played on the subsequent records the band did in that time. And in 2011, released his second solo album, One Man Mutiny, which also got some decent reviews, but none of his other solo outings seemed to sell well, and to me, I liked them, but they didn't still quite hold the same appeal as the Bash and Pop album. His next step would find him be getting back together with former bandmate Paul, Repester, Paul Westerberg, geez, tongue tied tonight, and replacing, um, tongue tied again, and reuniting the replacements in 2013. Uh, they would record like a couple tunes for an EP for uh, bandmates. Slim Dunlop, who had gotten sick and it was kind of a benefit stuff for them. And they toured for two years before calling it a day again. During that time, uh, Tommy was working on some material that was possibly going to be for a new Replacements album, but the idea of that kind of got shelved, and so Tommy decided he was going to start working on another solo album. Now, I caught him mm, oh, three years back now. I think it was 2014. He was opening for the old 97s. He had guested on their current album at the time, Most Messed Up and he was doing some limited dates opening for them solo. And I saw him play then, it was basically just him and he had another dude who would come up and occasionally play keyboards and drums with him. So he played some solo stuff then, which was really cool. But 
in the process of making this new album, he decided he didn't really like the piecemeal way that he was putting it together, nor like the last two solo albums he'd done, where it was kind of like record a song or parts of a song here or there, and maybe weeks or months or even a year would go by between finishing up a whole album and having a whole record enough to do. And he was kind of missing the days where you would just kind of go back into the studio and just bash out an album pretty much live. So, he revived the old Bash and Pop moniker, and with some new players, he got Steve Selvage from the Hold Steady on lead guitar, Joe Sarios on drums from Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, and Justin Perkins on bass from Screeching Weasel, and uh, put out a new record under the Bash and Pop name, under the title Anything Could Happen, kind of a pun on the thing, hey, do you know uh, if Bash and Pop will ever release enough, another record? Well, anything could happen. So, nice pun there. But much like the uh, first Bash and Pop album, it's still a lot of Tommy who's doing, again, all the singing, the songwriting, the guitar playing, a lot of the bass work. And the other guys are pretty much there um, to fill out a band and lend help there and do some touring dates and stuff. But it's kind of, again, more or less a band and name only. But even then, as for the album itself, pretty much picks up right where the debut album left off which is quite something considering the 24 years of time difference between the two. And the album opens on the scorching uh, Not This Time, which you just heard, and continues through a lot of great highlights, such as uh, On The Rocks, uh, the album's title track that could hold its own amongst the best of the replacements work. Uh, there's uh, the twang swang, a uh, breathing room, which is really nice. Anybody Else is an acoustic ballad. Um, rather, excuse me, Anybody Else, and then the acoustic tinge ballad, uh, Can't Be Bothered, which closes out side one, and that's just side one. Side two opens on the sweet bad news that musically recalls old school, early solo Rod Stewart, with some really nice slide guitar work. Um, another great track on the album is uh, countrified ballad, barroom ballad, Anytime Soon, and uh, the old school flip off replacement style of song, Unfuck You. Uh, Jesus Love You is a song that wouldn't sound out of place on a Georgia Satellites album, and that is a compliment. Um, I love the Satellites. Dan Baird. And the record closes out on the acoustic uh, shortcut. It's a great lament that holds up with the best of anything Paul Westberg ever did in his solo career as well. So overall, a fine continuation of the legacy of Bash and Pop, and even just Tommy Stinson's solo stuff in general. Uh, if the debut album was the best thing that Stinson's ever done, this is the second best right here, but really on par with the first Bash and Pop album. And speaking of the first Bash and Pop album, that is finally seeing its long overdue debut on vinyl for the first time ever. It is part of Rhino Records' 2017 campaign for Start Your Ear Off Right. It was something they did last year, where basically uh, finds Rhino Records issuing and reissuing a bunch of records sometimes for their vinyl debut things like the bash and pop album uh cheap tricks woke up with a monster another favorite seeing its first time on vinyl ever as well as uh some reissues sometimes it's things that have uh, been released before just out of print um the uh entire replacement sire records catalog which has been out of print for a while they reissued them all in a box set a year or so ago but they reissued them all separately now Records like Don't Tell a Soul, which is one of my favorite replacements albums, and the only one I, for whatever reason, I'd never gotten until now, so I'm glad to finally have a chance to get that again. Uh, also, there's some really cool um, colored vinyl releases. I don't have it handy on me, but the Dead Boys, Young, Loud, and Snotty is reissued on Snot Green Vinyl. Pretty cool. As well as some other cool stuff. I'll put a link into the Rhino Records site so you can check out what other releases are out. I was going to do a separate show on that, but... Got so much things I'm getting kind of behind on. I just decided to include it as part of this, especially since uh, the Bash and Pop album played into this too. It also you get a free Rhino Records 2017 calendar. That's really great. It's full of a lot of cool information about bands and album releases. David Bowie there for you. Now this is a program that was going on all through the month of January, and basically um, the records were staggered over the different releases. So. If their local record store still has any calendars or not, that's going to be kind of up to them, but you can ask them, check it out, and they may have gotten a bunch of them, but definitely be sure you go out and get some of the great releases from that. Make sure you go out and pick up the new Fashion Pop album, Anything Could Happen. Solid, great album. 
2017 just off to an excellent start. And while you're at it, pick up the band's debut, Friday Night is Killing Me, recently re reissued on vinyl too. This is, of course, out on CD as well. You can also go to the band's Pledge Music page where you can find a bunch of other cool stuff that you can get from them there. But um, happy to have a new album from Bash and Pop, Tommy Stinson, especially one that's this great too. So uh, join us next week. We're going to be talking about the another, another return and actually the week after that too. Uh, seems to be the theme for February so far. But um, next week we'll be talking about a band I've been waiting for five years to talk about. Technically only four because I've only been doing the show for four years this year. Uh, but it's taken that long for them to come out with a follow-up. Actually, I wish I could have talked about the, the uh, last album from this group. But tune in and find out who it is and who I'm talking about. Thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you're catching my good friend Scott over at Righteous Vinyl. Checking out all the fine podcasts that I share on my page too. And we will see you next time on Sit and Spin. See you then.